All right. So we had an a interesting event happen in our uh, Facebook group, and I wanted to come and talk a little bit about it because uh, one unsettled veteran, and I won't, I won't say uh, the person's name, was uh, a little upset, a little concerned, very curious about what had gone on uh, with respect to her request for records from the Veteran Readiness and Employment Program. So uh, giving a little bit of backstory for some of you who may be uh, tuning in for the first time and what we're talking about here, we're frequently talking about the Department of Veterans Affairs and uh, veteran benefits and their experiences in trying to get benefits from the Department of Veterans Affairs. In this context, we're talking about a smaller program within there called Veteran Readiness and Employment. Now, Veteran Readiness and Employment is a great program. Uh, it's called a bunch of different things. Uh, chapter 31 it used to be called Voc Rehab back in the day. It uh, Now the formal name is Veteran Readiness and Employment, right? Which tells us a little bit less about what it does than it used to, but hey, whatever. That's kind of the name of the game when it comes to bureaucrats, right? So had a veteran uh, write in over the weekend very concerned about what she had found in her file. So this particular veteran had gotten a copy of your file, wanted us here, uh, me, <laughs> to talk about it so people could understand what happened. But she was uh, shocked to realize, and I'll, I'll quote this because it was so interesting, she was surprised that, in all caps, everything we do there is monitored and written about and can pop up in our claims files. Crazy. So I, you know, being an attorney and I've been involved with uh, Veteran Readiness and Employment, formerly Voc Rehab or Vocational Rehabilitation Employment for years and years and years. And that's the, the benefit that paid for my uh, law degree to become an attorney and also my undergrad helped me to graduate from Northwestern uh, University way back in the day. And uh, anyway, so here she writes into our group. Again, some of you may not be uh, familiar with the group, so I'm going to put it up at the top ticker here so you can see it. So this is basically groups backslash voc rehab. That's our group. There's about 37,000 or more uh, veterans in there that are talking about voc rehab benefits all the time. You know, everyone's sharing information. It's a free resource for veterans out there. And you can get all kinds of feedback from folks that have been dealing with uh, VA voc rehab and, you know, everything else that goes along with it. So anyway, this one veteran had written in how surprised she was that the program is actually taking data, all kinds of data, and in her opinion, monitoring her and writing about it. And she was just flabbergasted at the number of negative comments about her, including how she was dressed when she went in. And she had written in, uh, quote, I had no idea they critique us on the first day when we go in to take those skills tests. There were so many negative comments about how I didn't dress up for it. I had no idea that was expected. Well, so I wanted to talk about this and we'd put it up in the group because a lot of folks in our group don't didn't know that in fact when you're going in for the program benefits the very first thing that they're starting to do right after you apply is that they're gathering forensic data on you to create a legal trail and so the the whole point of that is to just no different than when we go in for a disability compensation exam and that doctor physician nurse whoever it is is taking actual notes and creating information and a legal record about you the voc rehab does the same thing veteran readiness and employment so when you go in one of the things that they haven't been doing a great job of and i think this is a, a potential ethical breach of the uh, program as 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 a whole is that they're supposed to provide you with what's called written informed consent when you go in. And so what that usually means, like in, in Minnesota, there are certain uh, rules about informed consent. So you have to write about written informed consent it means you sign something, right? And you're consenting to it and you're granting permission. So to give an idea of what is going on within VR and e, veteran readiness and employment, what they're doing is they're creating a paper trail, a record, and it's part of what's called a, an initial evaluation. And so that initial evaluation is usually, but not always, memorialized in a document called a VA Form 28-1902B. And on that form and other documents, they're going to be creating a whole, whole host of statements about you and your appearance and about how you're behaving and uh, what you want to do with, in life and anything you can think of that they're, that they're able to and willing to write down about you. They're going to write that down on the form. So you got to know that. So in other words, in this context, the veteran had no idea that within VR&E that they're going to you know, log all this data about you because 
like most veterans, and I think I probably fell into this camp too back in the day, when you hear about what they're called, so they're called, they used to be called vocational rehabilitation counselors, which is a term of art. So like a rehabilitation counselor is a person that has certain ethical duties and is trained a certain way to make sure that they're cataloging data about a person or helping a person in a certain way that's really unique to what a rehabilitation counselor is. So this is a, a very uh, skilled position. It requires specified training. And in many instances, including within the VA, or at least it used to be, where they were encouraged to get certifications. And so part of the certification process, so that everyone is aware, is uh, mandated by the Commission on Rehabilitation Counselor Certification. Now, you don't have to have what's called a CRC designation when you're working as a rehab counselor within VA, but it used to be encouraged. Nonetheless, veteran readiness and employment is required to follow those rules. And wouldn't you know that in looking at this particular instance, it doesn't look like uh, veteran readiness and employment has adopted the appropriate practices for written informed consent. So for any veteran coming in, they are the agency is required, at least assuming that they're following the CRC guidelines and they're supposed to, they say they are. So everyone should think and have reason to believe that, in fact, VRNE is following this stuff, they're supposed to provide you with written informed consent. What they do provide you with is what's called a VA form 28-0800. And so veterans, if you're watching this, make sure you read over that document very closely so you understand what it says. It tells you essentially what they're going to be doing. Now, the program used to not disclose as much information about this initial evaluation, or at least in, in the same way that they do now. Now they're a little bit better, at least about explaining what it is. But one thing that's missing from this form, and if you're watching this, whoever's running the show in VRNE service, if you're watching this, your form is deficient. It doesn't provide the right language for written informed consent. In order to grant written informed consent, not only do you need to sign something, which the form does do, you need to be consenting to something and granting permission for something right? In Minnesota, uh, in looking at this today, digging around, we have what is called a Tennyson warning, and we have other types of requirements. So to give you an example of what here in Minnesota we talk about, quote, I give permission for, this is an example, FDA to release data about me to the National Institute of Health, as described in this consent form. So that is something that you're granting informed consent for somebody to release. They're gonna take information. You're saying, I agree to this and please do. So in other words, in order to grant informed consent, you have to be aware that there's an option to say no. You have to have a form. It has to explain this. What VA does is they give you a form that appears to be uh, mandatory to sign and you have to sign essentially acknowledging, or at least it, it seems this way. You would be signing it, acknowledging that you got it, you know, kind of like your kid's report card or something like that. And then that's about it. But the, uh, the document itself, like the old document, was definitely deficient. The new document is still lacking because it doesn't actually grant informed consent. You're just acknowledging you got it and you sign a date and that's about it. So uh, anyway, going back to our, our veteran, she was shocked. And, and I was a little bit surprised that a lot of people in our group didn't realize that the agency, and again, I put it up here on the ticker so you can check out the group. Uh, if you want to get information there, they're, they, they just weren't aware that the VA is logging information. And I, I get, again, from my perspective, after being an attorney for uh, almost a decade, I, I, for, I for, you forget sometimes that, that people just don't think like that. And so when you're going in to see this counselor, you're thinking, oh, this might be a therapist and you're going to wax poetic about your experiences in life maybe and talk about different things. But that's not actually what they're there to do. What they're there to do is to catalog everything about you that they think is relevant. Sometimes they do this wrong, which is why God created attorneys to help veterans rep, you know, get representation when there's an error. But uh, nonetheless, they, um, they frequently do get this wrong. But they're cataloging data about you. Apparently, a lot of veterans were unaware that this was the case. And so I want to make sure that, again, I, I'd promised to uh, to share this with folks. And uh, it looks like we got a couple people here. I probably missed this. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. If you ever, if, by the way, what is uh, pretty awesome here, uh, I can actually see uh, the comments. So if you guys have a comment or question about this when I'm doing the chat, feel free to, you know, pop it in there and I could actually give you uh, information. So again, going back to what we're talking about and within the, the voc rehab context, 
that program does log what you're doing and they're required to, right? Because when you go in, they have to make an adjudication. In order to do that, you need legal documents to assess it. I don't think in any other program within VA do they actually address the, the unique criteria for veteran readiness and employment, which, you know, to really boil it down is, does a person A or one, number one, do you have a employment handicap? Number and basically an employment handicap uh, has a variety, there's three different things you can look it up at uh, 38 CFR 21.51. But essentially, what they're trying to find out is do you have vocational impairments? Have the effect of the impairments been overcome? Are they caused by your service connected disability in large part? That's kind of how I would summarize that. So that's the first part. Second part, number two, if you have an employment handicap, then they want to see, is it a serious employment handicap? And that's essentially a similar type of thing. It requires uh, additional factors to be considered. And what they're looking for there is, is the disability significant? And, and something that probably we need to talk a little bit about is what is the difference between employment handicap and serious employment handicap. It's whether or not the vocational impairment is significant. So you can imagine they have to uh, go through at least nine factors to assess whether that's the case. This is a common error uh, that rehab counselors run into where they just do an insufficient exam because they are assessment because they are usually overworked and have over like 120 cases or something like that. So they're constantly like churning and they're only spending a little bit of time on each case. So anyway, um, then the last thing is uh, whether or not uh, achievement of a vocational goal is feasible. And so that's the general gist of what they're supposed to do. But you can imagine in just those three things, the, the person, the counselor is going to be getting a lot of information. And so uh, just want to make sure that when you're in that process, guys, men and women, you know, wherever you are in, in, in the country, in the world, if you're watching this, make sure that you're just aware they're taking a note of everything you're doing and it's by design. They're not trying to be sneaky about it. Although I would argue that the lack of informed consent suggests that they are being sneaky about it, or at least trying to catch a veteran kind of in their native environment where the veteran is feeling uh, comfortable and thinks they're talking to a therapist instead of uh, somebody doing a forensic uh, exam on them or forensic evaluation. So very important uh, to do this. And if you do have questions, I'm going to be writing about this tomorrow. So tomorrow is Tuesday, October 25th. So I'm going to be writing about this on the blog, disabledveterans.org. I'll, I'll post it up there. I'll post probably this uh, video as well if you want to catch it again and get, get a copy of it. So the general gist of this is uh, if you're going into a veteran readiness and employment appointment, it's your first appointment, Read over that sheet very, very closely. Hey, Tino, thanks for thanks for the the comment here. By the way, I <laughs> love it. So uh, yeah, VA probably won't ever change. So uh, anyway, the um, the gist of this is that they are logging what you are doing. They're supposed to log what. This isn't secret in the sense that you know a lot of vendors don't know they're doing it, but this isn't a secret that they have to do it in order to follow the, the regulations. But based on these ethical requirements, they're supposed to provide you with informed or they're supposed to seek informed consent from you for that purpose. Now in Minnesota, what they have is a, you know, very specific samples about what informed consent is. They also have requirements when a government entity is taking private and personal and confidential information from you where they, you have to get a, a warning on how the data is going to be used and they have to seek permission on variants or changes with respect to how they're doing that. So that's something that, at least in my opinion, uh, that VR&D, Veteran Readiness and Employment, is just not doing right. So they're, they're doing an inadequate job of educating veterans on the front end when they're going in to get their benefits about what to do. And unfortunately, that is the source of a lot of adverse decisions that uh, end up requiring a fight to get overturned. And that's where, you know, somebody like me comes in where, I represent veterans against veteran readiness and employment, which is how I became familiar with this issue. But nonetheless, again, this uh, this one veteran in our group, if you're not in the group, feel free to go there and try to sign up. Make sure you answer all the questions when you get there. And uh, there's certain, you know, you got to fill out like three questions or whatever when you get to the, the group in order to join. But the, the veteran question I had asked, well, hey, do you mind if I write about this? She said, absolutely. Make sure you inform as many veterans as possible. So 
essentially we don't get caught with our pants down. You're going in there and you may not be aware that it's essentially like a job interview. Uh, so you, you gotta be ready for it. You know, you don't want to go in there. Well, I mean, it depends on you and <laughs> don't, don't let me, don't let me steer you wrong. If, if you have a freak flag that needs to flail and that's just how you're, you are, then do it, <laughs> you know, go in there. Uh, I, I wouldn't, but that's, you know, that's part of why I guess I became an attorney. You know, some people have a disposition for certain things and others don't. And, you know, there's a place for everybody in this world. So, uh, anyway, when you're, when you're going into vr &E, I, I just want you all to know you are being monitored it's not to be creepy but some of the, the the feedback that they will give you may seem creepy and in fact it is sometimes very very wrong so uh be aware there is a record how they render those decisions uh so if you get an adverse decision or a decision that isn't quite what you thought it was going to be maybe they're granting you like employment services or they're just not being too transparent about what they're doing it's really important for you to understand that behind all of this is a layer of there are records and they're creating records that you've probably never seen before that in fact were not part of the claims file in a formal way until just a couple of years ago. So Voc Rehab has been around or Veteran Readiness and Employment uh, under different names has been around for decades. And imagine all those disability claims going back decades that lacked the records and now you know va is starting to jam them in there and uh make it appear at least again i don't think it's maybe nefarious they just didn't think about it uh they're putting them in the record now as if they were in the claims file sometimes if you're looking at it you would think that that's how they were there but these uh, were not in the file until a couple years ago and even until this year there's some that are that are still not there so yeah it, it's it's a thing so make sure you understand if you're going in there for uh, uh, your initial evaluation, that's your first appointment. Make sure, very sure, that you are talking to them about exactly you know what you think you're doing, and make sure that you're very you know straightforward and transparent about what your hope is and your goal of the program. Make sure that you're also aware that what you're saying uh, can be written down, and it can and will be used against you okay and that may end up in court okay so remember this so what you're saying may be used against you it's not exactly like a miranda situation but it's important to know that what you're saying may even be quoted so uh food for thought folks you gotta you gotta definitely be aware whenever you're dealing with the va definitely make sure that what is going on is uh, above board. Make sure that you're understanding of what's going on. And then when, okay, so real quick question. So Tino has a good question here. Is there a way for veterans to request a copy of their records online uh, from appointments they had with the vet center? So the vet center has a different database. So one thing, uh, so when you're going in for VA appointments, each appointment type is gonna have a unique data system. So Veteran Readiness and Employment uses a system called C Winners for its case notes, C-W-I-N-R-S. Then you have for VA appointments for disability compensation, that's usually within VBMS, and they have some other data systems too, but the main one is VBMS. VRD puts their records, the adjudication records that they believe are supposed to be there, even though sometimes they don't know what they're talking about, uh, will end up also in the C file underneath the Veteran Readiness and Employment tab. Then you have Vet Center records, which could be like maybe there's a voc rehab counselor there that's working for VA, you know, the benefit side, that uh, those records will be in the normal spot for Veteran Readiness and Employment records. If you're at the Vet Center, though, for mental health or related, those records are going to be in a different spot. So I, I don't remember what it's called, if it's going to be in like your Vista cprs file maybe but i thought that vet center uses a unique data system they may end up in your health records they may not so uh, this is part of you know the new va and what they're working on and trying to get sorted out so uh just be aware that they may or may not uh yeah they may or may not be there so just just so you know uh food for thought anyway but it, really great question, question, Tino. I appreciate that. So uh, having said all this, again, going back to the, the mantra here, we had a veteran 
in the Facebook group, it's in the ticker up above, who had an issue come up and she was shocked to learn that everything that she was doing at her initial evaluation appointment was uh, monitored and written down and in the claims file. Very surprised about that. It is true. There, and in fact, there were, uh, I'll post an image of the, the, the comment tomorrow. But basically, the, uh, you know, there were a lot of veterans in there that were really surprised. They didn't understand that that was what was going on. They thought maybe that the, the counselor was just, you know, benevolently chatting with them about stuff and didn't have any idea that it was being cataloged and, and recorded in writing, you know, about what was up. So very important to know because, again, veterans, uh, we have a kind of a low, I would say a low understanding as a population group of how VA collects data and then what they're doing with it. I wish they would be more transparent about that, but they're, they're just not. Uh, they, they maybe for whatever reason don't think that we uh, deserve to know or need to know all the time, like where they're cataloging things. But I'm uh, constantly in my con you know capacity as a journalist and as an attorney running into strange things where VA keeps records in places that it doesn't believe our system of records. You know, it's really, I don't know. Uh, uh, they're not my, uh, my uh, client. So I guess I don't have to worry sometimes about what VA thinks or does, but uh, at least in that context. But, you know, I think that they're frequently wrong about how they catalog uh, records. But uh, when it comes to the veteran readiness and employment program, though, in this context, it's totally normal for the voc rehab or veteran readiness counselor to, be doing that what is not good and and it looks like to me is out of compliance with the crcc criteria for ethics is that they're not really seeking true informed consent so to me that's something that the program needs to work on they changed the form in april of 2021 made it a little bit better but it's still not really seeking informed consent which again if you're watching this informed consent is when you are being informed of what's happening and you're being given an option to do it, and then you consent to it, okay? So, hey, Stormcott, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, you got to consent to it. It's super important. And so, you know, it, it is what it is. But we, um, you know, as veterans got to get smart on this. We have to understand what's going on, where the data is going. We want to make sure it's being used for the right purposes. We also want to make sure that what's being cataloged is correct. And so the last part of this before I... Uh, go get some dinner is that uh, when it comes to your records, if you happen to get them and there are, there's information in it that's wrong, you can challenge that information under the privacy act. And there may be some other methodologies as well, perhaps like HIPAA or something has some other methods. So, but nonetheless, if there's something wrong about you, you get the records and you're like, Oh, this is totally wrong. You can, if you want to spend the time doing it, uh, do a privacy act challenge you can also hire an attorney to do the same. That's uh, totally outside, as I understand it, outside of the benefits arena completely. It is a federal, like, it starts with the administrative process of the Privacy Act, and then uh, you have to go to court to address it later if that's the case. And so, anyway, having said all that, I, yeah, just be smart out there. And when you're going in for these appointments, uh, what you can what you do say can and probably will be used against you, especially if it can be used to justify an adverse decision. The agency is supposed to be pro claimant, but it's frequently not. The Department of Veterans Affairs is really just a large insurance company. It used to be called the Bureau of War Risk Insurance, and its regulations were largely developed and evolved out of business insurance adjudications. And we know with that type of methodology, the claimant or the veteran or the insurer insured party is usually not going to get uh, a fair shake from the insurance company it's just kind of the nature of the beast that's why we have the movie rainmaker if you've ever seen that and great benefit awesome movie with matt damon so if you happen to watch that think about your experience going for benefits against the department of veterans affairs maybe parts of that movie might seem to hit close to home so just food for thought if you want to watch an oldie but a goodie out of the 80s or 90s, whenever it came out, probably early 90s. Uh, Rainmaker is a good one. But going back to the the point of this, just want to keep everyone informed. Hey, they're supposed to catalog what you're doing, but they're also supposed to inform you, of, I think, in more detail about what that means and how they're going to use the data, uh, which they kind of do, but they also kind of don't. And then they don't seek your permission. 
So that seems to be pretty important. So that's, yeah, I know. I love that movie. I've just seen Storm Cop. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's again, it's an awesome movie. Uh, watch it. Thanks, Tino. Appreciate it. So uh, basically, yeah, be aware. This is also true with the healthcare side too. These are all things that I'm going to start talking about more now that I think I have my streaming system figured out. But uh, it's it's kind of taking me a little bit of time here. So I have to double check and make sure that this uh, video actually is working okay. But anyway, uh, until next time, God bless. I hope you all uh, are having a, a good uh, October coming into the, the, the winter months here. Hopefully it's not going to be too cold. But until next time, and I'm going to be doing more of these on a regular basis because they're coming up. <laughs> so uh, until next time, uh, I don't know if I want to say stay safe anymore. Go kick some butt. Go get your benefits. You know, make sure you hold VA accountable. Do the right thing, and uh, try to try to get what you deserve and what you uh, earned as a consequence or as a benefit of your service. It's your benefits. It's not theirs, and uh, they may act like it's theirs, but it's not. It's yours, and so fight for it. Go join our group if you want to. It is uh, facebook.com backslash groups black backslash voc rehab that group's been around for over a decade i created it back in 2009 before i even went to law school and it has a lot of good stuff there a lot of good people 37,000 veterans strong it's been around it's the biggest of its type and one of the original social media groups for veterans so until next time uh, check it out and otherwise we'll uh, tune in here very soon take care